Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Can-Am. The ride says it all. Polaris, the world leader in off-road innovation. And by Yamaha, conquer outdoors. There's really only been seven major ATV and side-by-side -side manufacturers that are easily recognized and well-established in this industry for many years. CF Moto's been around for a long time in other countries. They are an extremely well-established brand in other parts of the world, despite being relatively new here in North America. And this is important because we feel they are quickly becoming a legitimate and respectable eighth manufacturer in the North American ATV and side-by-side -side industry. We've been working with CF Moto for a number of years now and have had the opportunity to test a long list of their side-by-sides and ATVs. In the beginning, we had our reservations about build quality and durability, but since those things have all been addressed, as has the number one factor that we felt was holding them back from growing even more. CF Moto has been pushing hard to get their name on the front door of more dealerships across North America because A, if you can't find a place to buy a CF Moto, you probably won't, and B, if after you buy a CF Moto, you can't find a place to get parts and service, you probably won't buy another one. It's this real world approach by the North American arm of the company to growing the CF Moto brand that has us convinced they're gonna be around for many years and that they're not just here to sell a few ATVs. They're trying to build a brand into something that can rival the other seven long established North American manufacturers. Their lineup of side-by-sides and ATVs is surprisingly long and covers all the most important bases. From 800cc pure sport side-by-sides to 400cc entry-level ATVs, there's a CF Moto for almost every purpose. As a newer manufacturer in the North American off-road market, we feel it's CF Moto's entry-level and budget-friendly vehicles that are going to gain them the most traction in the least amount of time. And with a very competitive pricing structure on their low-displacement vehicles, saving a few bucks buying a CF Moto isn't a possibility, it's a guarantee. Starting at the very bottom, we have the C-Force 400. Now, this vehicle has all the same features as any other entry-level model from other manufacturers, like shiftable 4x4 with diff lock, fully independent suspension, two-inch hitch receiver, and a digital gauge. But as a base model, this thing retails for only $49.95 Canadian. Yeah, you heard that right. For just under 5,000 bucks, you can get a fully equipped and fully capable ATV. It even includes things like genuine CV Tech clutches and nice painted plastics. The 500HO models are equally as impressive in both specification and price. This C-Force 500HO is a two-up ATV complete with an extended chassis, two-up seat, backrest, and raised floorboards. All this for a crazy 8395 with EPS, aluminum wheels, and a winch. On the side-by-side -side end of things, the story is equally as good. The smallest of CF Moto's pure sport side-by-sides is the Z-Force 500HO. Now, this vehicle is available in both a standard 52-inch model and a 50-inch trail model, both with the same specifications and the same price. The Z-Force 500HO retails for an impressive $99.95 Canadian. Let's put this into perspective. Polaris's lowest cost pure sport option is the Razor 570 Trail. It's only available as a 50-inch wide model and it retails for $12,599. That's $2,600 more than the 37 horsepower 52-inch wide Z-Force 500. The Z-Force 500 includes things like a roof, rear cargo net, adjustable piggyback remote reservoir shocks, mirrors, front and rear bumpers, and genuine CV Tech clutches. On the utility end of things, you've got the U-Force 500. Using the same 37 horsepower 500cc engine as the Z-Force, the U-Force competes directly with vehicles like Polaris's Ranger 570 and Arctic Cat's Prowler 500. The U-Force 500 comes standard with, you guessed it, CV Tech clutches, a roof, half doors, a winch, mirrors, all for an outstanding 10-225 Canadian, which is gonna save you 1,200 bucks versus the Arctic Cat and $1,900 versus the Polaris. All of CF Moto's low displacement ATV and side-by-sides are available as an LX package, which includes power steering, aluminum wheels, and a winch if the base model doesn't already include it. If you compare their LX packages to competing models from other brands, you're still saving up to two grand, which is pretty impressive. The value here is obviously outstanding, but a vehicle is only as good as the dealer you buy it from. So at the end of the day, the overall value of a CF Moto hangs on whether or not you have a local dealer. Here at Dirt Tracks, we have a good CF Moto dealer right in our hometown, so getting service or warranty work done is easy. 
For us, a CF Moto would be a completely reasonable choice if we were searching for a new low displacement side-by-side -side or ATV. Maybe you don't have a CF Moto dealer nearby. In that case, you need to weigh out the cost savings versus inconvenience of not having a local dealer. Whether or not it's worth it is completely up to you. What we can say with all confidence though, is that if you are shopping for a low displacement or entry level ATV or side-by-side, -side, CF Moto is absolutely worth a serious look. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. The thrill of the ride, carving a hard, fast corner, accelerating out of the turn, squeezing the throttle and hearing the RPM build, the feel of the wind and the sweet smell of nature at speed. These are the things that Power Sports World offers. These are the things that keep me coming back for more. It's the stuff the off-road world is made of, and it's what Polaris has brought to the street. There's no camouflaging this vehicle, and there's no mistaking it if it passes you by. This is a Polaris slingshot, and if you own one, you're going to be telling people that a lot. To say this motorcycle demands attention would be a huge understatement. At less than one third the price, this slingshot will turn far more heads than a new Corvette Stingray and is more on par with a Lamborghini, Ferrari, or Bugatti. And unless you're a motoring enthusiast, the average onlooker's eyes will still be drawn to this $30,000 masterpiece over the aforementioned list. Styling in the power sports industry is love-hate. Some vehicles have it and others don't. While the slingshot does have some very interesting lines, it's the front and three-quarter angles that really make a statement. The styling team at Polaris outdid themselves with the slingshot. This vehicle is not just unmistakable, it's unforgettable. The front end design drips cool, and when you open up the forward hinging hood, you won't get more attention if you were handing out free $100 bills. But with all that said, it does have some other lines that you'll either love or hate. The slingshot is a trike. Well, it's kind of a trike. It's a backwards trike, much like the Can-Am Spider. It's registered as a motorcycle, and it only has one rear wheel in this huge cavernous expanse. When you stand at the rear of the slingshot, it's different. It's very different. This singular rear wheel is the reason it gets its motorcycle status, but it's also something of a conversation starter. You'll think it's cool, or you're gonna think it's ugly. There's not too much middle ground. Most folks ask why they didn't put a second tire on the back and make it like a KTM Expo. And the simple answer is, this slingshot with four wheels would be a car, and therefore fall under all the same safety standards as a car. Not something feasible for Polaris to pull off at this price point. While the exterior looks of the slingshot are gonna determine whether you actually wanna take it for a test drive, I need to implore you, if there's something that you don't like about the looks of this vehicle, do it anyways, because once you're behind the driver's seat, it's gonna change everything. The 2.4 liter dual overhead cam Chevrolet power plant is from the Pontiac Solstice and the Saturn Ion, and it's meshed to a Getrag five-speed manual transmission with a supercar-like, incredibly notchy and short throw shifter weather-resistant bucket seats hold you firmly, and the in-your-face controls and gauges let you know this isn't gonna be your average drive. Looking towards the horizon, the pearl white fenders meeting the black accent fender stripe make you feel like it's all motor out front. And in reality, it is. Now let me be straight, while this is powered by a car engine that made the Pontiac Solstice feel pretty peppy, in this vehicle, it's just not what you'd expect. It's so much more. Holding the traction control button for an extra few seconds also removes stability control and gives you 100% power with zero computer oversight. Hit the red line and dump the clutch and this monster three-wheeler will lay rubber through third gear and occasionally squawk the tire into fourth. While the rear end does like to wander when you've turned off the computer, the front end mass and dual wheel setup keeps control in the driver's hands. To say this is fun would be like calling Donald Trump well off. This thing is insane. The technology inside of the slingshot makes it handle like a race car on the road. And while getting up to speed isn't any problem whatsoever, slowing down, that's not an issue either. ABS discs are located on all three wheels and will slow the slingshot in a hurry. If you've got traction and stability control on, you can jam the brakes at any time and the computer helps to guide the slingshot to a stable controlled stop. While we usually don't have much use for stability or traction control, with this much mass out front, it truly helps keep you safe. 
as debris, sand, or gravel in corners can see the rear tire uh, get a little loose. However, the computer oversight removes the need for any response from the driver. High speed in the slingshot is easily reached. However, we found the electronic power steering to add some unnerving characteristics at those higher speeds. It may be too much response from minor input at high ground speed, but all test drivers who strapped into the slingshot found the steering manners too twitchy at a heightened pace. With that said, the suspension calibration was spot on and kept body roll and pitch to a minimum, even in hard cornering conditions. This is most likely thanks to the steel space frame, aluminum dual A-arm front suspension, and Polaris' vast knowledge of shock calibration. Now, even though the Slingshot isn't a family cruiser, we have been asked a lot of questions about just how practical it is and what kind of amenities come from the factory. Quite opposite of the motorcycle market, this vehicle is incredibly versatile. It offers large lockable storage trunks behind each seat, able to store a helmet, backpack, or similar sized tote, as well as a cavernous lockable glove box. The ability to travel for a weekend with necessities is without question. Tilt steering and manual adjust seats offer comfort for any driver, and on this SLLE White Pearl version, a 4.3 inch media console that offers a backup camera, six speaker Bluetooth audio, as well as interior accent lighting of the floor space offers amenities far beyond what you might imagine from a three-wheeled motorcycle. While performance typically comes at a cost of reduced comfort, that's not at all the case with the Slingshot. At 21.5 for the base model, or 26.5 as tested, you're gonna get a whole lot of attention, a whole lot of fun, and a ton of performance for the money. In Canada, you'll pay a $5,000 premium for either vehicle, but we feel that this is exceptional value for a vehicle that's changing the industry. Dirt Tracks is brought to you by MBRP Performance Exhaust. Lightweight performance. Cryptid. The word is from the Greek crypto and means hide. It's an animal or plant whose existence has been suggested but has not been discovered or documented with any direct evidence. That was until now. And while we were not quite sure what to make of it, there is evidence of where it's been and just how lethal it is. Okay, so I am talking about an ATV tire, but this isn't just any tire. This might possibly be the tire for people who dream about nothing but mud. These are ITP's latest kings of the pit. They are big, they are bad, and yes, they sling some serious mud. The smallest size you can get is 30 by 10s on a 14 inch rim, which is what we're installing today. Other options include 32 by 10 on 15s, 34 by 10 on 17s, and yeah, you might wanna grab a Q-tip for this one because you're hearing me correctly, 36 by 10 on a 17 inch rim. It's quite possible that your ATV or side-by-side -side might just have bigger tires than your lifted truck. Now I chose to put these tires on the biggest factory rig that we have around here, our Razor XP 1000 Turbo. It's got 144 horsepower and we're gonna need all of that to turn these huge lugs. The Turbo, yeah, it needs no introduction. And while many folks like to run big meets on their ATV, we actually feel there's a trend with many side-by-siders to start running mud. We see a slow but steady expansion of the side-by-side -side classes at mud runs, and a lot of folks are really getting into it. On this Turbo, we don't need to re-clutch as the factory tire size is so close, and it still has good throttle response and acceptable manners. I do have a 32 inch cryptid here to show you just how big a difference two inches can make. Now I wanted to originally put these 32s on our 1K turbo, but I was a little concerned about the clearances I have with the bodywork. I don't wanna start ripping stuff off and wrecking things. Now, if this is a 30 and this is a 32, you can only imagine how big the 36 would be. Now matching up your rims to your rubber, yeah, that's important. We want strength as this tire puts a lot of stress and load on the rim, but we also want style. The new Storm Series Tornado gives us all of that. Lifetime bender brake replacement guarantee, 1,200 pound load rating per rim, ITP's rock armor protection, and great overall eight spoke looks. And guess what? They come in, yep, 14, 15, and 17 inches to match the Krypton. Now there's lots to be said about rims and tires in brochures, but you can go to your local dealer and get a brochure. If you want an opinion, you're in the right place. So instead of telling you how these work, I'm just gonna show you.
So about 99% of the tires out there on the drive out to the mud pit are horrific. I mean, honestly, it feels like you're driving on boulders the whole time. These tires, ITP said they were gonna be good on the trail and good on the road. I doubted it. I was completely wrong. These things are awesome. They're stable. They don't dance around. They don't make any clacking noises or bouncing. They're really good on the trail. With the unique step lug height of 1.5 inches at the center and two inches at the outer shoulders, these tires grab the hardest outside the center line. And because of the chevron pattern lugs, that means they aren't trailing off their traction as the mud clears. They're actually increasing it. The super tall side biting lugs will literally claw at the side of trenches below the water and find grip where I did not think there was any. The compound seems to be pretty durable. And even after feeding these 144 horsepower with no regard for rocks, roots, or sticks, they don't have any chunked or cut lugs. Now as for the Razor, well, it can prove the cryptid exists. And the aftermath is measurable. Thank goodness for drain plugs. There's a ton of choices when it comes to aftermarket tires and rims, especially in the mud category. And today I've shown you just one of the many options that you have. But I believe that it's a very high quality choice, both due to the fact that it has a lifetime guarantee on the rim, and we've put it through some serious testing and on the other side of it, it came out with nothing but flying colors, or I guess flying mud. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailer, built for adventure. Earlier in this episode, we took a look at CF Moto's very complete 4 and 500cc ATV and side-by-side -side lineup. Now that we know what they offer in these engine sizes, let's take a look at what is definitely their most exciting 500cc unit, the CF Moto Z Force 500. I've spent considerable time in a Z Force chassis while racing a 12 hours of Latouk endurance race two years in a row as a CF Moto factory driver, and I learned a few things about this vehicle that might surprise you. This Z-Force is powered by a 500cc parallel twin-cylinder engine that produces a claimed 37.5 horsepower. Power is transferred to the wheels via a set of excellent quality CV Tech clutches into a standard high-low gearbox. Shiftable 4x4 with diff lock is standard and operated by a dual-button system like a Yamaha Grizzly. While the transmission shifts smoothly and positively and the 4x4 system engages and transfers power without any issues, the clutching on the Z-Force 500 is a little bit off. Power delivery is sluggish and back shifting is slow. The 500cc engine feels surprisingly good for only producing 37.5 horsepower, but with mellow clutching and slow back shift, the motor feels like it's lugging all the time and is having trouble shifting out to a higher RPM. Overall, I have to say I really like this motor. And when you consider that you're only paying 87.99 US and about 1200 bucks more in Canada for this thing at full retail, it really makes the horsepower disadvantage that it has against its competition a lot less of an issue. I raced non-power steering versions of the Z-Force and I can honestly say this is a great handling side-by-side. -side. While power steering is certainly a nice option if you choose to go with the LX model, it's entirely unnecessary. Steering is light and you get very little feedback from the ground through the steering wheel. Handling is also very predictable. This is an easy and confidence-inspiring vehicle to drive fast. Suspension is something of a conundrum with the Z-Force 500. Up front it has a set of compression and rebound adjustable piggyback remote reservoir shocks with threaded bodies for preload adjustment. They aren't the highest quality units, but they are definitely a step above the steel bodied non-adjustable units found on most lower cost sport side-by-sides. Out back you'll find a set of aluminum bodied shocks that are also threaded for preload, but feature a combination compression and rebound adjustment clicker, but don't have piggyback reservoirs. It's definitely a strange shock combination, but it's still better than most. At full soft, these shocks provide an adequately smooth ride at trail speeds. However, even turned up as far as they'll go, they are quickly overworked on larger bumps and even medium-sized jumps. With an upgraded set of shocks, I know firsthand the Z-Force can ride excellent and handle just about anything you can throw at it on the track or the trail. Ergonomically, the Z-Force is very comfortable. It's got tilt steering and well-padded seats that are really nicely reclined. It's also got more than adequate room for your legs down by the pedals. On the base model Z-Force 500, extras are sparse. It does come with a rear cargo net, front and rear bumpers, side mirrors, and odd inclusions like a horn and turn singles, but you don't get power steering, aluminum wheels, or the winch until you move up to the LX package. The most common questions we get asked about the Z-Force all relate to durability and reliability. 
When CF Moto first hit the scene in North America, these were things that needed to be addressed. Luckily, they have been. Our 500Z Force hasn't given us any trouble at all. It has a good warranty, and I've personally pounded the crap out of a Z Force 800 two years in a row in a two hour long endurance race, and have been very impressed with how well the vehicle survived. For the money, you're getting a full size, fully specced, pure sport side by side that handles great, rides decent, and has adequate power. CF Moto is also working really hard on expanding their dealer network all across North America. Bottom line on the Z Force 500 is that it does an excellent job of getting you out on the trail while still leaving a few bucks in your pocket. Dirt Tracks Television has been sponsored by Polaris, the world leader in off road innovation, Can Am, the ride says it all, and by Arctic Cat. Share our passion. If you like this video, click the link and subscribe to Dirt Tracks' YouTube page where we're updating all kinds of fresh stuff like you've just seen.